It's cold outside. Maybe it's even snowing. So let's snuggle down with basic ham radio. Perhaps as it was many years ago. But with a modern twist. Welcome to the Waters and Stanton video channel. This is our first video of 2023 and I'm glad you could join me. You know, amateur radio can sometimes appear to be rather complicated and rather expensive. You know, if the newcomer comes to the hobby or learns about the hobby and looks at some of the stations and he sees a rather expensive HF transceiver 100 watts into a linear amplifier, quite a few hundred watts. And then he looks at the antenna the station's using, and he's got a, a 20 meter tower in his back garden, or 25 meters even, and a big three element, or four element, or even five element Yaki. Well, now the first impression is great, that's what I want to do. But you know, it costs a lot of money and this may well be a deterrent for the newcomer. So what I want to do really is to explain how ham radio doesn't need to be as expensive. And you know, ironically, you can get just as much fun, at least most of us can, just as much fun running much lower power with a much simpler antenna and just nattering to fellow enthusiasts, sometimes on Morse code, more often on SSB. But it's the fun aspect that really should attract you to the hobby. Now, if you've got a lot of money, there's no harm in spending a lot of money on the hobby, getting yourself an expensive transceiver and getting planning permission for a tower in your garden, all the other things. Uh, if you've got that, that cash, fine. And of course it may come with time. Often you start off in a hobby and you think, well, I'm only going to spend a certain amount of money. And then you think, well, I'm really enjoying this, so I'm going to get a more expensive transceiver. Many of us, you know, still enjoy the old days when simplicity was really the necessity because you couldn't spend that much amount of money on, on gear. The, the idea of having more than one transceiver was well, a bit of a pipe dream really and as regards having a 20 metre tower in your garden well forget it you know it was a bit of wire down the garden and a simple transceiver and really and truly I think some of us still enjoy that concept simple ham radio and it's that concept which should really attract a lot more people than those that look at the hobby and think wow I couldn't afford that so Let's try and go back in time with a bit of a twist. Back in time when things weren't so expensive and things were a lot more simpler, but using some modern equipment. As an example, I'm, I'm going to use this little fella, which I've had a lot of fun with. This comes from China. It's made by a firm called Zigu. And this will deliver around about eight watts of power and it covers the shortwave ham radio bands. It covers 80 meters through to 10 meters. That means to say you can talk to local stations and far more distant stations. And I have had a lot of fun over Christmas with this, just using this as my transceiver, eight watts into a simple wire antenna. And how much does this cost? Well, including UK tax, it costs 299 pounds. And if you expand your station, it also acts as an excellent general coverage receiver. It also has FM broadcast on it as well. It's not overly expensive, but I think it's a rather underestimated transceiver. You know, it had some bad press, unfortunately, from some American guy who really didn't seem to know what he was doing. This transceiver is a nice little radio. It gives good quality audio, on SSB, it works on CW fine, 
I've had a lot of contacts on it and it's had a couple of firmware updates as well and this is the great thing about a lot of these modern transceivers you can update them they have firmware updates so as the manufacturers come up with some improvements it can be um, embodied into the transceiver simply by uploading the firmware so let me just give you an example of setting a little transceiver like this up in your new ham radio station many small radios like this have a bnc connector as you can see on the far left hand side so you need to convert that to an so239 and here's a converter that converts the socket to an so239 and here you can see the uh, radio now ready to set to PL259. I use the high mound uh, Morse key. I'll leave a link below this uh, video and mounted it on a piece of wood. <laughs> but it works. And now we need to connect the Morse key. Uh, Morse key is connected with a 3.5 millimeter stereo connector. And finally, we need to connect the 12 volt supply using the lead supplied. And that's all the back panel completed. If you're going to operate a phone, then you need a microphone. The radio comes with a microphone, and that's connected using one of these modular connectors that goes into the left-hand socket here. And now the radio is ready to go, either on SSB or Morse code. I mentioned just now about a power supply. You do need a power supply. Most amateur radio equipment runs off of a 12 volt supply, or actually 13.8 volts. And it's a good investment to buy a reasonable power supply. That enables you to change your equipment without worrying about whether the power supply can handle the power. And one of the most popular power supplies that uh, we sell is the Watson one. I just put it up on the screen here. Um, and that is a good investment because that power supply will not only supply this small radio, it will supply a 100 watt transceiver, which is a popular uh, power for um, most uh, ham radio stations. So it's a good investment. Buy a decent power supply, one that's reliable, nicely made, and it'll last you an awful long time and it'll enable you to expand your station without having to get a new power supply because the worst thing to do is to buy a small power supply which just about supplies the radio you're using and then find that when you get to a bigger or better radio you've got to new, buy a new power supply so it makes sense to buy a reasonable one to start with so what about antennas well you know the simplest antenna is very often a wire antenna mainly because apart from being simple it's also very inexpensive and i'm going to put up on the screen in a minute an antenna which i currently use and which has been working very well for me but certainly if you're coming into the hobby as a newcomer then i would suggest that you start with a simple wire antenna there's a dipole and there's verticals and all sorts of things don't get carried away by some of these fanciful names that manufacturers give antennas um, because basically one antenna, one vertical antenna, is very often the same as another vertical antenna. But one vertical antenna may have a fanciful name and the other one doesn't. And the same with Yargis and horizontal antennas. People love to give them names, but those names are very often generated by the advertising department. They have nothing to do with the performance of the antenna. Now, if you go on to, uh, or you look on YouTube, you'll find all sorts of designs for wire antennas and the basic dipole is a very popular one. The downside of the basic dipole is it only covers a single band. I'm gonna give you some details now of the antenna that I'm currently using, which works extremely well in a small garden, is not overly expensive. You can do a little bit of home construction as well on the matching unit. And uh, well, let's, let, me, let me show you what I'm currently using, which will give you some idea of how simple an antis antenna system can really be. Here's an extract from uh, a video I did a couple of months ago describing this antenna. And as I say, I will put a, a link below this video to the full length video so you can have a look at it for yourself. If you look at the dimension of this antenna, it is actually a full wavelength long on 20 meters if you take the vertical, horizontal and the other vertical section. That means to say it's a half wave on 40 meters. So if we attach a 49 to 1 anun at the bottom left, we can actually feed the antenna as a half wave on 40 meters. It also will operate as a half square antenna on 20 meters and it should also operate as an n-fed half wave on 15 and 10 meters 
Here's my half square antenna. One section runs up the fiberglass spider pole. Then I've got a 10 meter section horizontally going across uh, to a metal spider mast on the other end. And the vertical drops down about a meter from the spider mast and it drops down behind the uh, garden shed. Now, of course, you don't need a spider pole and a spider mast to support it. You could use the house at one end and you could use a tree at the other end. The great thing about it is it's um, only 10 metres long. It works extremely well. Um, you just, if you have the support at the house end, then you need that vertical section at least a metre or so away from the house, preferably a bit, a bit more. But it works well. You get a low VSWR on four bands, 40, 20, 15 and 10 metres. It's just one example. Um, of a whole range of antennas you could use but the great thing about wire antennas is generally speaking they don't cost much to install and that keeps the cost down. Now while we're talking about low cost entry into ham radio certainly for HF operation there's one transceiver that I shouldn't miss out and it's probably the best value on the market at the moment for HF transceivers and that's the Zigu G90. I've used this transceiver now for well over a year. I've been really impressed with it. It's rugged, it operates very nice, it's got a nice colour screen, it's got a, a panoramic display, it's got a built-in antenna tuner unit, comes with a microphone and this retails at the moment including the UK sales tag at £449. I reckon it's tremendous value. I've had a lot of fun with the G90. It really does represent great value. I also had a lot of fun with the G106, uh, mainly on CW, I must admit. G3 Ocean, Juliet Victor, QRP, QSL. Yeah, I got a dark time, Peter. Congratulations, G3 OJV, GI0 LVI. Uh, Peter, I think you might have a signal for QRP. Peter, you're 20 over 9 at the moment, so uh, nice thing. Now, I'm sure there's many hams around the world that enjoy simple uh, ham radio operation. I haven't got lots of radios and lots of this and that. They've got a basic transceiver with a simple antenna system and they are more than happy and you know there's a certain amount of skill in fact I say certain amount there's a lot of skill in ham radio operation and with a very simple straightforward transceiver and antenna system you can work some good DX it's a skill knowing when to go on knowing when to listen knowing when to call it's almost like fishing really you know uh, you give two two fishermen or two people a rod and one will catch lots of fish and one won't and uh, they're using identical uh, equipment and it's the same with ham radio you don't need a lot of gear to get good results but it's rather like photography you can get several cameras and you get lots of lenses and you get a lot of enjoyment out of using it and to be fair a lot of ham radio operators get a lot of joy out of using all their gear that they've purchased and good luck to them it's it's good fun it's a hobby and some of them have some enormous great antenna systems and they've they've learned a lot by installing the antenna systems they get a lot of enjoyment out of working lots and lots of stations we all have to work within our limits whether they be financial limits or our own ability or our own discretion our own choice some people want to use simple equipment to communicate with. Others want a lot of gear and it's what suits them. It's not what's right and what's wrong, it's what suits them. So if you're new to ham radio, don't think you've got, a lot to spend, got, got to spend a lot of money. And if you're one of those operators that uses fairly basic, simple equipment and gets a lot of enjoyment out of ham radio, I'm sure you'll let me know, as usual, in the comments under the video.
Thanks for your support on this channel. Much appreciated. Thanks. Thank you for your support to our company. Uh, equally appreciated. And I wish you all the best for 2023. See you in the next video. Bye for now.